Today, we're still talking about copycat mode because it's still a thing among people, especially in English 1, where you can practically see everyone asking to play this mode. Honestly, at this point, I'm starting to think other modes like Sui and PTK have gone the way of the dinosaurs. Did they ever even exist? Or was that just some fever dream we all had? Copycat mode has officially taken over the game. It's like the Kardashians. No matter where you go, there it is. Now let's talk about lying in copycat mode. Apparently some people are having a rough time with it. You'd think lying would come naturally after a few years of dodging family events or tricking your friend into misery. But no, some folks in this game can't lie to save their lives. Even my goldfish, Elizabeth, could lie better about whether she's been fed or not. And Elizabeth's memory resets every three seconds. So that's saying something. So, today I'm here to give you some tips on creating the perfect lie in copycat mode based on what I've learned. Stay tuned, folks. Knowledge is power in this mode. If you're going to be spreading misinformation like wildfire, you've got to actually know what you're talking about. Otherwise, you're just setting yourself up for a major facepalm moment. I mean, if you don't even know the details of the lies you're spinning, what are you going to do when someone who actually knows their stuff calls you out? What's the plan? Blame it on your imaginary twin brother. Or maybe claim that your phone got hijacked by FBI. Come on, you've got to do better than that. Even Elizabeth could come up with something more convincing. But what exactly do I need to know? You ask. Oh, just everything. But don't worry, I'll narrow it down to three key things. Every role, the map layout, and the detective's tasks. First off, knowing every role in this game is crucial, even if you're not playing that role. As a copycat, you're gonna spend a lot of time pretending to be the detective, so you better know what each detective can actually do. Otherwise, you'll end up like that one person who claims to be the senator and says they can multiply votes. Except, well, that's the banker's ability. Suddenly, everyone's giving you the side eye like, are you for real? And let's not forget about memorizing the map. It's crucial to know the map layout so you can blend your lies with just enough truth to make them believable. For instance, if you eliminate someone in the CCTV room and a few minutes later someone reports it, you'd better claim you were in the farthest possible place from the CCTV room. But then, what is the farthest place from the CCTV room? If you don't know, you're basically inviting everyone to point their fingers at you. Knowing the detective tasks is crucial too. If someone starts pointing fingers at you, you'll often need to come up with an excuse for what you were doing. But how can you make a believable excuse if you don't even know what those tasks are or where they're done? It's like trying to fake your way through a cooking class without knowing how to boil water. In conclusion, make sure you've got all the details down before you start spinning your web of lies. Doing the detective's tasks might seem trivial, but it's actually key for solid alibi. Detectives are quick to suspect anyone who's just wandering around without a purpose. So, if you want to avoid the spotlight, you'd better get in on those tasks, just like everyone else. Plus, if a body turns up and you were doing a task with a detective at that time, that detective can vouch for you. Imagine them saying, I was with number seven in the piano room, doing a piano concert. Not only does this help clear your name, but it might even make that detective trust you more since you were with them when the murder went down. You've probably heard of the self-report tactic, where you eliminate someone and then report it yourself. It's a sneaky way to point fingers and play the witness, making it look like you're just an innocent bystander. If done right, it can shift suspicion onto someone else or even get you off the hook. But if you mess it up, you might end up looking more suspicious than a cat in a dog show. Or worse, 
get voted out on the spot. So, how do you pull off a self-report like a pro? Personally, I like to wait until other detectives are already eyeing each other. When things are tense and suspicions are flying, I eliminate someone when I'm near the most suspicious detective. Then, I report the body and point the finger at the suspicious detective, making them the fall guy. If you want to be a bit riskier, you can accuse a suspicious detective, even if they weren't with you during the elimination. It's a gamble though. If they've been with someone else, they might have a solid alibi. The self-report can also be your lifeline when you're under attack. If someone accuses you of taking out a detective, you can hit back with the self-report angle. Say something like, I was just entering the room and found you with a dead body. You must have done the self-report. Or, I was miles away from that room. It's clearly you doing the self-report. Being investigative during meetings can be tricky, but really pays off in establishing trust with others. When someone reports a dead body, you can start blabbering questions about it, such as, where's the body? Or, did anyone see who left the area? You can also say something like, I noticed number eight around that spot, but I'm not totally sure he did it. That way, the others might see you as someone who is trying to find the copycat without realizing that you are actually the copycat. After some discussions, things could really swing in favor for the copycats when detectives start turning on each other. When the chaos begins, you can jump in and either back someone up or throw them under the bus to win their trust. For example, let's say a detective is reporting a body but other detectives suspect it's a self-report. You can step in and defend the accused by saying something like, let's not vote someone out without solid proof. Or if you're feeling particularly devious, you can join in the accusations by claiming, I saw that person wandering around and doing nothing. This way, even if no one gets voted out right away, you can still win some trust from the detectives you supported. Later on, you can use this trust to your advantage. And if you end up eliminating those same detectives, you can pull off a self-report and point fingers at someone else. The others might think you're just a helpful player, not the copycat, because you were so supportive towards that detective earlier. Another sneaky trick in your copycat toolkit is to not lie at all. Sounds counterintuitive, right? But think about it. The more you lie, the more you have to cover your tracks, and the more suspicious you become. Instead, consider fading into the background and staying completely silent unless absolutely necessary. Being a wallflower can actually work to your advantage. Just like those people who owe you money and suddenly disappear without a trace, you can slip under the radar while you handle the dirty work. However, don't stay silent if the heat is on you. If people start accusing you and you keep mum, you'll quickly become everyone's favorite target. Speak up when needed to defend yourself. But otherwise, let the accusations swirl around while you stay in the shadows. Next up, there's a tricky stunt that can really shake things up, though it's a bit of a gamble. The idea is to accuse someone who's rarely seen. What the Now, the reason this works is simple. People naturally get suspicious of those who seem to be off the grid. Why? Well, it's usually for two reasons. First, they might be sneaking around, sabotaging tasks or hunting for a lone target. Second, they're easy scapegoats for anyone who's feeling cornered, be it a detective or another copycat. With no one around to vouch for them, they're like low-hanging fruit for suspicion. But here's where it can backfire. If you call them out and it turns out they've been busy doing tasks with someone else, you'll suddenly find yourself under the magnifying glass. People might start thinking you're trying to shift the blame, which is a surefire way to get yourself caught. So, the trick is to approach this carefully. Instead of directly pointing fingers, drop subtle hints. Say something like, I haven't seen Seven around for a while. Maybe he's off doing something we don't know about. Or five went missing twice during the sabotage. That's a little odd, right? 
This way, you plant the seed of doubt without making yourself the focus of suspicion. Like I mentioned before, making allies as a copycat is key. Think of it this way. The more people trust you, the less likely they are to suspect you're up to no good, even though you absolutely are. A trusting ally is like having an alibi on speed dial. You don't want to eliminate them too soon, because they're your secret weapon in those tense meeting phases. They'll back you up, even when it doesn't make any sense. Seriously, they might be like, Yeah, I saw them watering the plants in the greenhouse, when the game doesn't even have a greenhouse. That kind of blind loyalty makes it tough for the smart detectives to pin anything on you. So, how do you earn that trust? One easy trick is to stick close to someone and pretend to be busy with tasks while a body is conveniently discovered elsewhere. Then in the meeting, you can casually mention that you were working together with that person. There's a good chance that you'll get away without being suspected and more, you may have got yourself an ally. Just make sure to keep them around as long as possible, because their trust is very important during the meeting phase. When one detective starts pointing fingers at another but the copycats, it's basically your cue to stir the pot as a copycat. Here's what you do. Take out the accuser. For example, let's say detective number two suspects number six of being the copycat, and no one gets voted out. During the active phase, track down number two and, well, you know, make sure they have a good night's sleep and don't self-report after you say goodnight to number two. Instead, quietly slip away like nothing happened and pretend to be busy with some innocent task. When someone eventually finds the body, that's when you throw the bomb to the one accused. You can casually drop something like, I saw number six lurking around the area when the body was found. Maybe number two was right about number six after all. This will crank up the suspicion against number six, and if number six cannot defend themselves, they're likely to get the boot. Meanwhile, you're just sitting back, watching the chaos unfold like the mastermind you are. This might sound a little crazy, but one of the riskiest and surprisingly effective strategies to craft the perfect lie is to mix in a harsh truth. And by that, I mean, throwing your buddy under the bus during a meeting. Imagine your copycat partner is so deep in suspicion that they're practically drowning, with detectives piling on and accusing them left and right. At that point, you can join the dog pile and accuse them too. Now, assuming your friend doesn't blow your cover because they're savvy enough to get the strategy, this move can help you blend in seamlessly with the crowd, letting you keep on doing your dirty work while everyone's distracted. But there are two golden rules to follow before you sell out your friend. First, make sure they're a lost cause, like there's no way they can be saved, and defending them would just make you look suspicious. Second, only sell them out if they're dead weight, whether they've botched their tasks, are jeopardizing the entire operation, or are just plain useless, like being AFK. It's a dirty move, but hey, you're already playing dirty, right? I'm not sure how it works in your country, but where I'm from, the police won't even bother arresting someone acting crazy and doing silly things. And guess what? That same trick works like a charm in this game. So here's the deal. The fool is a mystery guest who automatically wins if they get voted out. Naturally, everyone tries to avoid lynching them. After all, nobody wants to lose the game or hand the fool a free win, right? So when the fool starts acting all wild and desperate to get kicked out, the detectives just roll their eyes and ignore them. But what if the fool isn't really the fool? What if they are the mastermind playing things on their hands? Let me tell you about this one match where I was the copycat, and I decided to disguise myself as a fool. I started following one detective around like a lost puppy but never actually eliminating them, just being super annoying. Then I call a meeting to ramble about saving the world, 
throw out random accusations at innocent players, and basically act like a complete jerk. The detectives just assumed I was the fool trying to get voted out, and left me alone the entire match. And guess what? They never voted me out! I got to sit back and enjoy as everyone else got eliminated, all because they thought I was just some harmless fool. Little did they know, I was the one pulling all the strings. So there you have it! 10 tips to help you lie your way to victory in copycat mode. And if all else fails, just remember the golden rule as a copycat. If you can't convince them, confuse them. Don't forget to drop your best copycat mode stories in the comments because I want to hear about all the ridiculous strategies you've tried as well. Thanks for tuning in, and I'll see you all next time.